in a robe of glory he arrayed him. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most Highest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the midst of the congregation he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In a robe of glory he arrayed him. Here in our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who hast enlightened thy church by the marvelous learning of blessed Thomas, thy confessor, and hast made it fruitful by thy holy labors, grant us grace, we beseech thee, both to receive his doctrine with understanding and to fulfill in our lives the righteousness of his example. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is written in the Book of Wisdom, the seventh chapter, beginning at the seventh verse. I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon God, and the Spirit of Wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her any gracious, sto any precious stone because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. All good things together came to me with her, and innumerable riches in her hands, and I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom goeth before them. And I knew that, that she knew not that she was the mother of them. I learn diligently, and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches, for she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use her become the friends of God, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. Here in the lesson. The mouth of the righteous is exercised in wisdom, and his tongue will be talking of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and his going shall not slide. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. He hath great delight in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the faithful shall be blessed. Riches and plenteousness shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. The Lord be with you. Continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said unto his disciples, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your lights so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Today we are commemorating the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, probably the greatest of theologians, uh, really the one who wrote what we call systematic theology uh, in such a way that it became the standard of learning uh, for, the, or for the Western Church, at least, uh, for many centuries. Thomas Aquinas is the greatest theologian of the High Middle Ages, and next to Augustine, perhaps, the greatest theologian in the history of Western Christianity. Born into a noble Italian family, probably in the year 1225, he entered the new Dominican order of preachers and soon became an outstanding teacher in an age of intellectual fervent. Perceiving the challenges that the recent rediscovery of Aristotle's works might entail for Catholic, uh, traditional Catholic doctrine, especially its emphasis upon empirical knowledge derived from reason and sense perception, independent of faith and revelation. Thomas asserted that reason and revelation are in basic harmony. Grace, or revelation, he said, is not the denial of nature, reason, but the perfection of it. This synthesis Thomas accomplished in his greatest works, the Summa Theologica, or the and the Summa Contra Gentiles, which even today continue to exercise profound intellectual influence on Christian thought and philosophy. He was considered a bold thinker, even a radical, and certain aspects of his thought were condemned by the ecclesiastical authorities. His canonization being declared a saint on July 18, 1323, vindicated him. Thomas understood God's disclosure of his nature in Exodus 3.14, I am who I am, uh, to mean that God is being the ultimate reality from which everything derives its being. The difference between God and the world is that it is God's essence to exist, whereas all other things derive their being, their existence from him by the act of creation. Although for Thomas God and the world are distinct, there is nevertheless an analogy of being between God and the world since the creator is reflected in his creation. It is possible, therefore, to have a limited knowledge of God by analogy from the created world. On this basis, human reason can demonstrate that God exists, that he created the world, and that he contains in himself as their cause all the perfections which exist in his creation. The distinctive truths of the Christian faith, however, such as the Trinity and the Incarnation, God becoming man, are only known by revelation. Thomas died in the year 1274, at under, just under the age of 50. In 1369, on January 28th, his remains were transferred to Toulouse. In addition to his many theological writings, he composed several Eucharistic hymns. They include, O Saving Victim, and Now My Tongue, the Mystery Telling. And of course, uh, at the end of today's service, we will sing O Saving Victim as a part of our, and then of course, the therefore we before him bending, both of those being Thomas Aquinas' hymns. Um, I took a wonderful class in St. Thomas Aquinas when I was in seminary. Uh, Dr. Peter Toon, uh, of late memory, God rest his soul, uh, taught that class. And it really gave you an idea of the way in which Thomas built a system of, of explaining the nature of God. He would start with, um, some people say this, and some people say that, and some people say this, but I say, and he would make a statement about God. And then he would go on to explain why the other ones were not completely right or completely wrong and why his statement was founded in both reason and in revelation. Uh, and then the next one would be built on, so since this is true, then some people say this, 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 and this, but I say. And it's a wonderful way, but you know, it's, in my, when I would read it, it would take about, I don't know, four or five pages before I'd start to have a nosebleed from being so high and, and lofty. Uh, it was really good, but I remember the one that really struck me, that made me really think, was that there is no, that God is pure actuality. In other words, he's pure act. There's no potential in God, right? Now, I remember the old expression, potential means you're just not worth a darn yet, right? Uh, well, there, there's no potential in God. You can't say that God is becoming something because he's perfect. He's God, exactly, John. Right. 
the, the primary cause, the first cause, exactly. Right. So this, this idea for Thomas Aquinas to say that there's no potential in God helped me to realize that what I was studying and who I was studying was grounded in something so solid and set um, that I didn't have to play these mental mind games of, of, you know, could God make a rock so large that he himself couldn't make? That's a question people who don't really want an answer ask because he's pure actuality. So we thank God for St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, interestingly enough, at the end of his life, uh, right before he died, he had a vision. Uh, and he realized that even all the great writing he wrote was like straw being set on fire compared to the love of God. That all of that didn't matter as long as we knew that God loved us. And so we embrace that, even if we don't always get the cerebral part. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Lebanon. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of all creation, thy goodness we have to spread to us. Who the earth and work in his hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of all creation. Of thy goodness we have this morning to offer fruit, vine, and work in his hands. You become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. I will wash my hands with the mist and seal, Lord, and so shall I go to thy love with the voice of praise and thanksgiving to all the Lord. Lord, I have loved the Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Be grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the primates of our Anglican communion, for Wendell, the bishop of our diocese, for keep my bishop protector, for the clergy of this parish, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. For Linda, for Jay, for his health issues, for our shepherds, for last worship, in thanksgiving for the tenth birthday of my daughter Margaret. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear. For all those who died on this New Year's mind of their death, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace to follow the good examples of St. Mary, St. John the Evangelist, St. Thomas Aquinas, and all the saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen.
need you to truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and our love and charity of your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God without me kneeling. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in this of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here are comfortable words our Savior Christ hath to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me and right so to do. It is very meet, right in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his own oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice of oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall pray, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us 
by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be.
has left unto us a perpetual memorial of thy passion. Grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of thy redemption, who livest and reignest, world without end. Amen. Blessed be, God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be, his holy name. Blessed, be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be, the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be, his most sacred heart. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be God, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Blessed be God, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Blessed be the Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and His angels and in His saints. Blessed be God and His angels and in His saints. Let us forever adore the most holy sacrament. Let us forever adore the most holy sacrament. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye peoples. 
for his merciful kindness is evermore and more toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us forever adore the most holy sacrament. Let us forever adore the most holy sacrament.